Hello, and welcome to the configuration tutorial for building an API through the PMG Workflow Designer. In this video, we will create a workflow that resets a user's Active Directory password or enables the account in AD. This API can be used to supplement the new contractor process built in the Build an Application tutorial. Let's get started. First, let's create a new workflow, which I'll name Contractor API. You have a choice of service or system type. Here, we will go with service. With a blank canvas, we can now create any process to be callable through web services. As this workflow will focus on Active Directory management, let's grab the two AD actions of enable user and update single AD property. This property will be the password, but it could be any AD attribute. Next, we will want a decision step, which will determine which process to run based on the information provided in the API call. Now that we have the basic flow mapped, let's start configuring attributes. In set user enabled, we can add a label to the action. Next, we will need to add the domain scenario. This allows the workflow to manage accounts in various AD domains where you have different service accounts. For this case, press control space to bring up a dropdown of existing variables. Choose domain, which is a pre-configured variable set up for the sandbox environment. We will need the distinguished name of the user we are going to update. This is a dynamic variable, which will change based on the API call. We will come back to this in a few minutes. Leave it blank for now. Type enabled in the attribute box to determine what to set the account to. Next, we will need to configure the update single AD property action. Again, set the domain scenario to domain. We will skip the distinguished name attribute again. This will be set up shortly and enter a password in the AD property name. This could be any property such as display name, but for our focus of this workflow, set it to password. The AD property value will be the user's new password. In this example, we will take something passed in with the web service call. The PMG workflow engine allows you to create different types of variables that can be dynamically updated while a workflow is in process. For this contractor API workflow, we're going to add a few different types. The first are variables that we passed in during the API call. Activity will be a string value for what processes to run when the workflow gets to the decision step. Email will be the email value of the person whose account will be updated. Password will be the value of the new password the end user will have. Finally, we are going to add a contractor variable, which will be used to store all the information from Active Directory about a user. This information will then be usable in portions of the workflow. Set type to user, then save and close. Now we are going to use an action called set user variable, which will allow us to store all AD information about the user based on their email. Make some room in the workflow to have the action executed at the beginning. To configure, click on the click to add text under users. Here we enter logic for what we want to store. You can enter complex if then statements, but for this example, we just want to grab the Active Directory information for the user that has the same email address as the one that we passed in during the API call. Set the variable to contractor. Add a label if you wish, and you are good to go. I'm going to add a couple status update actions as well. Now, we need to add the distinguish name variable to each of the Active Directory actions. Since we added the contractor variable, we can now map in that information for both actions. Use the control space hotkey to display the different variables and choose contractor.distinguish name. For the AD property value, map the password variable. Finally, we will set the decision step rules to execute the correct process 
based on whatever activity is sent in the API call. First, create an output of enable and set the logic to the variable activity equaling the text enable. The next output will be reset and set the logic to the variable activity equaling the text reset. On the two output paths from the decision action, choose the appropriate path names. The workflow is now good to go. Click on the, the deploy new version to save and make the workflow ready to run. Now, since the workflow is going to be called as an API instead of being called from a form, let's go to workflow functions under manage. Here, click on add, then select run in workflow engine logged, which will store every execution of this workflow. Next, choose the input variable we expect the web service to provide. In this case, we expect it to include the activity we wish to perform, the email of the user being updated, and finally the password we want to reset the user's password to. Click save. A pop-up will ask if you want to use the current user ID. This is fine. Just click the green box and click save. Now, you will see the option to enter in the three inputs required. If you've created any contractors from previous tutorials, you can use one of those. Otherwise, jsnow at pmg.net will work. Finally, add the new password information. Click test, which will now execute the workflow with the provided variables. Here you can see the result of the configured process. The password has been reset. Let's make this workflow callable by external applications. Click on the add row under permissions. This allows multiple security checks to be implemented, but we will just go with the API key. Click save. At the top of the screen, select workflow API endpoints. Here we can run another test. Copy and paste the API key from the previous screen, then enter in the workflow variables again. Click Execute and you'll see the output below. This means that the workflow can now be called from an external application. Postman is a good free application that you can easily download online. You can even export the API information for a simple copy and paste configuration. Within Postman, select Import, paste the information under Paste Raw Text. Under Collections, look for Workflow API and you'll see the name of the workflow you created, populating the headers and the body of the REST call. Click Send, and you'll see a response back from the PMG Workflow Designer. Congratulations. You've now just built an API that calls a workflow process without using any code.